These animations show two different examples of Euler angle sequences. So Euler angle sequences are a sequence of three rotations about principal axes, which are the x, y, and z axes, that are commonly used to describe orientations of objects in 3D space, such as spacecraft, airplanes, drones, robots, and more. So the animation on the left is an example of a 3-2-1 sequence, where the first rotation occurs around the body z axis, as shown here. Then after that rotation is done, the next rotation is about the y-axis. And after that one's done, the next rotation is about the x-axis. And on the right is a 3-1-3 sequence. So the first rotation is about the z-axis. Second rotation is about the x-axis. And the third one is about the z-axis again. Now notice that even though in both cases each rotation is 70 degrees, the frames end up in very different places because of the difference in the sequences. And this video will be covering how to describe each of the X, Y, and Z rotations with rotation matrices and how those rotation matrices are formulated. So the sixth video in the series, and this one I'm going to be going over the principal rotations. So this video is going to extend what was covered in the last video. So I'm just going to do a quick review and then move on to how these rotations are applied to 3D space. So if we recall, the matrix vector multiplication equation has three components. The original vector that you would like to rotate, which is in this diagram, in this case I did in the last video, is the x vector, so 1, 0, 0. The rotation matrix that encodes the rotation that you want, where this is a z principal axis rotation, and then the final rotated vector. Now the format of the rotation matrix tells you where the three basis vectors, which are the x, y, and z vectors, will end up after performing this z axis rotation. So the first column vector of the matrix tells you where the x-axis, 1, 0, 0, is going to end up after applying this rotation. As can be seen in this diagram, after doing this rotation about theta degrees in the counterclockwise rotation, the x-axis ends up having these coordinates that are cosine theta, sine theta, and 0, which, are the same thing as, which is the same thing as the first column vector of the rotation matrix. And then the second column vector tells you where the y-axis basis vector ends up after the rotation. So this negative sine theta, cosine theta, and 0, which is where this y-axis ended up. And then 0, 0, 1 is the z-axis because this is a rotation about the z, so the z stays stationary. And again, here is a diagram from the last video showing why the y-axis column has that format. So you can see after this rotation, we can see that the y-axis is at this point here, and if we draw the projections onto the y-axis and down to the x-axis, we can see that the height of this vector is now cosine theta, and the x component of this vector is negative sine theta because it's on the left side of the x-axis, where positive x-axis is going to the right, and it's on the left side, so it's negative, which gives it this form of negative sine theta cosine theta zero for its new coordinates. So here is that same z-axis rotation in 3D, where we now have the original reference frame, which we can call the inertial frame in the white, and then the rotating z-frame is in the blue, where in this example, this blue frame is rotating about the z-axis. And the matrix on the left is the same corresponding rotation matrix that we've seen before, where this column vector represents where the x vector is at any given time with respect to theta. This one's the y, and the z remains constant, which is y is 0, 0, 1. So now we have the y-axis rotation, where we can have the animation here on the top right, and this is a still frame of it, where the z-axis have rotated some amount theta downward like this, and same thing with the x-axis. So let's take a look at the rotation matrix. So the first column vector has the coordinates of the new x-axis after the rotation, which we can, z, we can see that is cosine theta, 0, negative sine theta. And now this kind of makes sense because as we can see that the z-axis, the z-coordinate of this new x-vector should be negative because the z-vector is positive in the upward direction and here is pointing a little bit downward. That's where that negative sine theta comes from. And then its new x-coordinate is cosine theta in the same way that it was before, where then if we just draw a triangle from here to here, we can see that this distance from here to where the x projection, where the projection of the green vector is onto the original x vector is going to be equal to 1 times cosine theta. And the x vector still has no component in the y-axis because it's rotating about it, so no part of it is rotating either towards or away from the y-axis. And then the y-axis, or the second column vector is 0, 1, 0, which corresponds to the y-axis that isn't moving, which makes sense because this is a rotation about the y-axis, so the y-axis should be stationary. 
And then for the third column vector, we get the coordinates of the z-axis, which are sine theta, zero, cosine theta. And again, since it's rotating about the z-axis, it's not getting anywhere closer or farther from or in the y direction, so its y component is still zero. And then again, if we draw a triangle here, we'd be able to see, and if we have the projection of the z, the new z-axis going down to the original x-axis, we would see from the triangle that we get an x-coordinate of sine theta and then a z-coordinate of cosine theta. And finally, for the x rotation, so let's take a look at this rotation matrix. So again, the first column vector represents where the x-axis would be after the rotation, which is 1, 0, 0, which means that it stays exactly where it is, which makes sense because, again, we're doing a rotation about the x-axis. And then we have the second column vector, which represents what the new y-axis will be after the rotation, which, again, has components 0 for x because it's not moving any closer or farther in the x direction since it's rotating about it. And then we have that the y component of it is cosine theta and z is sine theta. And again, you could draw this out yourself and figure out why it's in this order of cosine theta sine theta by drawing the projection of this new y vector onto this vector and then figuring out what these two sides are of that triangle. And then we get from the z-axis, again, zero component in the x-vector for the same reasons. And we have negative sine theta for the y-component and cosine theta for the z-component. And it makes sense why this is negative because since it's now rotated from here downward in this way, it is now pointing towards the negative y-direction, which is why this is a negative sine theta and cosine theta. And again, you could draw out the triangle here to show yourself that why this is the case, why we have sine theta and cosine theta in that order. So as I said at the beginning of the video, these rotations can be done in sequence in order to describe how frames are oriented with respect to each other, where this is very useful in a case that say you have a spacecraft and you want to know how its body reference frame is oriented with respect to say the Earth-centered inertial frame or the Earth-centered Earth fixed frame if you want to look at specific points on the Earth. And one of the most common examples of these Euler angles is a 3-2-1 or ZYX rotation matrix or uh, Euler angle sequence where the three corresponds to the Z, two corresponds to the Y, and one corresponds to the X. And you do it in that order. So the first rotation is Z axis, then Y, then X, as I showed in the first slide. And this is just one of the ways to do an Euler angle sequence, but another commonly used one that is also used in orbital mechanics is this 313 sequence that is shown here. So the first rotation as was just done is around the z-axis, second one right now is about the x-axis, and the third one again is done about the z-axis. Now notice that these rotations are around the body fix axes. So the z-axis, the first z-axis rotation is not inertially about the same vector as the second z-axis rotation. So the first z-axis rotation occurs about the inertial z-axis, but then the third rotation occurs about this new z-axis which is pointed in some other direction in 3D space. Now, this is just a sneak peek. I'm going to cover this in way more detail when I do the Euler Angles video, which is going to be next. But I'm just kind of, I guess again, giving a little sneak peek of where this is headed to. So this is actually how the Keplerian orbital elements are defined. So the three angles that describe the orientation of an orbit with respect to the inertial frame is a 313 Euler angle sequence, where the first rotation is a rotation about the z-axis, which is your right ascension. The second rotation is a rotation about the x-axis, which is the orbital inclination. And the third rotation about the z-axis, again, is the argument of periapse. And I'll be going into this, also this, uh, in a future video. So that's pretty much it for this video. Be sure to hit like and subscribe if you like the video and to comment to help me out with YouTube algorithm. And also let me know if you found this anything confusing slash if you have any questions or comments about how I explain this and if anything is still fuzzy. And the next video, I'll be starting into the Euler angles, which is again, going more into these rotations, how to describe a body or a reference frame with respect to another reference frame, which can also be done with quaternions, which I'll also be covering. And these are all prerequisites for the spacecraft attitude control series.